All righty. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, this talk is more about story than it is about math, so it'll be easy listening, I hope. So the story begins a long time, long time ago. In 1959, I received a copy of Martin Gardner's Hexaflexagons and uh, Mathematical Diversions. And I was instantly, instantly taken by the chapter on hexaflexagons at the age of 15. And I had to make them all. And I figured out how to grow them and all the rest of that. So two years later, in 1961, Martin Gardner publishes a second book of mathematical puzzles and games. And in this book, he outlines a tetraflexagon. But the tetraflexagon that he outlined looked like this. This is what I call the square of squares tetraflexagon. I don't think it's a real one. When I took this flexagon and folded it one joint at a time, such as you do for a hexaflexagon, it didn't work. So what did I do? I took scissors and tape and made it work. And I came up with this. This is the correct, the, the one with four eight squares there is the proper tetra tetraflexagon, fairly well known now. I've since last October when I gave my talk, I've done some research on these. And that one is well known on many tetraflexagon sites. But the one with six faces there is not well known. I have never seen that anywhere, and I claim that to be the correct tetra hexa tetraflexagon. It didn't work. So I came up with these. Now, what constitutes a new variety? A new variety of a flexagon are, is defined by the sequence in which they show their faces. The sequence in which they show their faces is drawn as what was called a Tuckerman Traverse. In 1959, I didn't get it, but I have subsequently come up with my own versions thereof. On the second one in the image is one that I've come up with that uses straight lines instead of to indicate the face lines. And then the signature concept that I came up uh, with is looks like a poly polyiamond. So I come up with my beginning description of tetraflexagons. The basic tetraflexagon has four faces, shows in cycles one, two, three, four, goes around in circles. The next one has two cycles. It has six faces, and that's the, the one that I showed you with the cross face, and there's one version of that. Again, there's one way to make a diamond, or a pot, like a, a domino, out of a polyomino, and so there's one version of this. Now there's, when you add, now any flexagon can be made by adding faces to an existing flexagon. And that was one of the secrets I had discovered by 1961 is that every flexagon can be grown like another one. So we grow this one. And there's two ways that you can grow that hexa-hexa-flexagon hexa that has two different distinct flex cycles. And so this determines that there's actually two kinds of these. You can have a left-handed and a right-handed version of, of that one that's crooked. Now when you have four cycles, you have the five, pen, the five tetrominoes that every Tetris player likes. Now my chart goes off the tracks here with polyominoes because the, what looks like a block polyomino is really not a block polyomino, but is a U polyomino, and it has internal edges. And to those internal edges, you can add more cycles. So instead of 12 versions with five cycles, there's 16, including one that has overlaps uh, in the cycles. And I can go through more of that uh, in a bit. So this is, uh, this is a real basic introduction to tetraflexagons. I've put on your tables a variety of them so that you can look at them. And so now we're going to switch over. We fast forward to 1989. In 1989, I read the book on Martin Gardner and his Penrose tiles. Well, fascinating. Didn't really get, I mean, I'm not the mathematician here, but I'm absolutely fascinated with the pattern. So sit on this for 16 years. And I decided I had a need for a heated floor. So I thought, why not get myself a Penrose tile floor? And so I set out to get a Penrose tile floor. So the first thing I do is I go and find some tile artists in Taos, New Mexico, who actually make these tiles. And 
After that, once I had a source for tiles, I found a Windows, Windows Pro, oh, oh boy, okay. Found a Windows program that, well, I wasted a lot of time. Uh, if you look at a piece of the Penrose pattern, then it just kind of looks like that. But, and then I colored them in some of the edges like that. And then I finished the design for my floor. And then I had my friend Mitch, who is a tile expert ex supreme, who was able to put the tile floor down. And this is what my tile, now some of you may have seen me, seen this thing behind me. So at any rate, this is my tile floor. So I decided to write my own app that I can do this. And I formalized my system for coloring it. So when you take the white, take the rings and count them by the number of tiles that they're in, you get the pattern that shows. So uh, I've got a slideshow of this all going on upstairs. And I think my time looks like it's up. So uh, I will take off. Sorry for a few delays. Thank you very, very much.